What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Pelk Talk. In today's podcast, I got a legend. He's a TikTok influencer, he's got more than 500,000 followers, and he plays D1 football Elon, John C. You guys have definitely seen my guy on TikTok. Big boy culture, D1 tips, he's the man. We really could connect him, bouncing ideas back off each other. Don't forget to listen on Apple and Spotify. Now, enjoy. What's up guys, Mitchell Pelky back with another episode of Pelk Talk. Today I'm joined by famous TikToker and Division I football player, John Seaton. How you doing, Big John? What's good, guys? Uh, I'm chilling, man. Doing well, working out a lot. Just trying to get better, trying to grow the brand. There you go, there you go. You got any You got any nicknames? That's a question that just popped in my head. So, actually, at school, people call me Papa Seaton. <laughs> really? Yeah, bro, my strength coach, he was like, I walk in the weight room. I lift in, actually, I'm here. These shoes. I lift in these shoes. I got those same shoes. That's funny. Yeah, bro. I got I lift in white socks and white shoes every day. But our team shoe, our team shoe this year was black. So my strength coach was like, You look like an old man wearing them things, bro. And I was like, <laughs> Call me Papa C in them, bro. And Papa C in. What about in high school? You got any game there or no? Back in the honey day? Bun. Honey bun. It was honey bun. <laughs> bro, because my sophomore year, I was 350, and we had, like, this little, like, team bonding talent kind of thing where – and somebody said I looked like a honey bun, and I was like, you're kind of right. And from sophomore to senior year, honey bun stuck. It was – How much are you weighing now? Right now, I'm, like, I'm like between 285, 290. So okay. Not- did you did, – did Elon make you cut that weight, or was that more of, like, a I want to do this type deal? That was – so, me actually dropping a bunch of weight was between my sophomore and senior year of high school. Sophomore year, I was 350, coming off my ACL injury. That year was just – I was like, yo, there's no way I can play at a high level at this weight. So, going into junior year, I cut down to, like, 295, 300. Okay. But it was a lot – it was a big difference in the offseason. I kept my strength, though, which was, which was nice. But I thought, you know, junior year, playing both ways a bit, I was like, you know what? I should probably drop a little bit more. So then going into senior year, I dropped to 270, which that was like the most fun, like the most fun weight to play at for me is 270 because I feel yeah. fast as all hell. Feel good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but going into college, especially because I don't have to play both ways anymore, um, I'm able to bulk up to like 285, 290 range so I can stand in the trenches with them. Yeah. <laughs> Country boys who be playing all line down there, man. There you go. Do they want you to stay around 285? Yeah. Like trying to get uh, you bigger. No, nah, they're trying to keep me around 285, like a good 285. It's because yeah. I'm, also, I'm also not that tall. I'm like, oh, I'm 6'1". I'm 6'1". Okay. So, I mean, 285, 290 is fit my frame real well. But yeah. all the other boys who are like 6'4", 6'5", they can afford to be above 300. They can afford to be above three bills. Yeah. Fast, but. How how would how'd you deal with that mentally freshman year tearing your ACL? Because you, you tore in January, right? Yeah, I did. It was something where I was like – like, this it really happened. It's not something that, like, you're ever used to because it's the first big injury I had. Yeah. Uh, usually for me, going through things like I've never dealt with before, it's it's honestly not too bad because first time ever having surgery, that was fun. Like, I, I'm not even going to lie. The best part about it was probably getting surgery and waking up. Uh-huh. And, yeah, waking up and recovering was great, man. I was like, wow. I was sitting there, some nurse handed me apple juice, and I was having a dandy little time. <laughs> sure. little after the next – Six to nine months of my life were gonna be hell, but like, yeah. I mean, it was fine. So, really, with that, I'm I'm also a grinder as a person. I like, yeah. I'm one of my biggest strengths is I can meticulously work at something over and over again. I like that. So I, going through PT and recovery, it was really all right. It wasn't too bad at all. I'm thankful that that it happened. To be honest, because it taught okay. me the value of like hard work and how to cherish like each moment of your sport. You appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Well, let's, let's not waste any time. Let's hop into the TikTok game because I'm really interested in, in all that. So, how, how did how did it kind of how did it kind of start for you? All right, how so did you kind of get into it? It started off at the beginning of like when COVID started popping off. Like, oh my right? god! Everyone I talked to, that's when they say they yeah. started. That was the peak, I think. Honestly, that was that was when TikTok peaked because everyone's content was going crazy. Everybody's content was going stupid. You swipe on random videos, and people would have a hundred thousand likes for absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, so my first video that went off was we were redoing old challenges during quarantine. It was me and a couple of my buddies who at the beginning of this one, we didn't know like how bad it was. We were still hanging out with each other. And we were, you know, the zoom challenge where like people would like yank others out the frame. Yeah. We'd, like we'd get in the car. Yeah. We did that, but like a fat kid version as to where I, somebody yanked my shorts off 
instead of yanking me out the frame. And like just the way that that video went was unreasonably funny. And then like 10 days after I posted it, I woke up and it had like 30,000 views. And then we just, it, it climbed all the way to like 800,000 at that point. I was just like, whoa, like, I had no clue what was going on. So, I mean, at that, I was like, shoot, I'm just going to keep trying to make content. And I had to find my niche. I had to find my crowd and what people liked. But eventually we did, and now we're here now. So How did you kind of – obviously playing football, big time consumer. How did you kind of pick that niche of, like, D1 football and, and just talking about the sport? I've seen a lot of guys on YouTube. Like, if you put D1 anything on YouTube, it has thousands upon thousands of views. Yeah. And with that, I was like, I want to be able to create authentic content without having a change in my lifestyle. And I feel like that was the easiest path to take. And it's something I'm passionate about. And it's something that, especially with football, because I've been like the leader figure on my team for all of high school for a long time, even before then. Um, I feel like one of my greatest qualities is that I'm a, I'm a good leader. Like I know, I know what teams need at any given point. And I feel like the way that I can use my voice to not only uh, make people laugh, but to make people not only believe in themselves, but believe in others around them. Yeah. It's something that <clears throat> I wanted to incorporate and something that I was like, you know what, let's give it a shot. I don't got nothing else to lose. I'm sitting in my house for six months, so we yeah. might as well. Hey, what, what else are you into besides like football and TikTok? Besides football and TikTok, I'm a big MMA guy. Really? I love, I love the sport of fighting, bro. I really, really? do. Really? That's sick. Yeah. Other than that, I love, I'm actually kind of a film nerd, too. Before TikTok started, I was just making, like, B-roll cut-ups. I'd, I'd go to, like, reservoirs and stuff like that and, like, all these, like, all these cool places and just film whatever, cut it up. A little try to behind get, that? Yeah, yeah, get more well-versed in, uh, in editing software, Final Cut. Yeah. Like that. So, I mean... You, you use Final Cut? I use Final Cut, bro. There you go. Everybody, so everybody, everybody gets down. They're like, why don't you use Adobe? I'm like, bro, Final Cut is where it's at. Oh I don't know. Shit, man. I'm I started you. making YouTube videos when I was a freshman in high school, so five years ago. And I started with iMovie and, like, obviously dominated that. Anyone, anyone, yeah. man. And then I made the, the, the jump to Adobe. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Like, going from, like, iPhone to Android. And then I was like, I got to go to Final Cut. Yeah, dude. And Final Cut is Final Cut's where it's at. It's a lot, though. There's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Even I don't know how to use some of the stuff in there, like keyframes, bro. It, I, you was trying to explain awful. keyframes to me. That's like speaking a whole different language. Like yeah. I, I have no clue how to use keyframes, but I can color correct and go. make what's like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I think like that actually brings up a good point. It's like these people always get in touch with me. They're like, yo, like how do you edit? How do you do this? I'm like, you don't have to know every little thing. I'd say dominate yeah. one thing. And like you're saying, like the niche and, and TikTok, yeah. I'd say like dominate one thing and you'll be fine. And then you're able to branch out. Once you have one thing down pat and you know that something is going to always give you the same ROI that, yeah. you give, that you give to it, you can start branching out to other things. I was doing some research. Your dad's actually a photographer, right? He is, man. He is. He That's actually cool. taught me how to he, – he helped me out a lot in Final Cut, like teach me how to edit and everything like that. He's, um, he's the one that got me into a lot of this whole like film stuff too. But oh, I want okay. to take a little – a little different direction because he's big into photography but i'm a I'm, a I'm a video guy yeah okay so did you kind of going back to the tiktok game did you kind of ever think like you'd be at or you're at 500 500 000 right now dude i had no clue i was sitting there i was like when people started following me i started following everybody back until i realized i was like wait <laughs> i don't gotta do that i was sitting there i was like hold on they're following me for my content not me following me because they know me. I'm like, the weirdest thing was when I stopped like following every single person back was seeing the numbers still grow and not like fall and shrink. And yeah. I was just like, wow, I have actually had no clue. Like it was like that, but yeah, man. What, what, what are the, what do your boys kind of react to it? They give you, they give you, uh, they, oh, they, give me, they give me some crap sometimes, man. They're yeah. always like, they're always like, oh, yeah, you're doing this because you're famous, bro. Or like, whenever, whenever something, the, the, I think the craziest thing is when somebody will show me or send me a TikTok and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm friends with that guy. They're like, I hate you. I'm like, whoa. Like, yeah, like, I, know. What, I know. What did I do, bro? But, exactly. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, it's, it's cool because everybody knows, at least all my friends, my close friends know that I'm still the same person from before I started. I'm not going to yeah. lie. A social media app and make me switch up. I'm still the same dude. I'm the regular. I'm some dude who posts videos on the internet. Exactly. I like that. that. That's a good mindset. What about when you first hopped on the app? Was it was it kind of like 
were you kind of iffy about it? Because, I mean, back then it was all dancing, right? And I feel like after quarantine and during quarantine, it, it kind of, like, brought more content to the app. I wasn't really too iffy about it because I, I, I found – I guess the first couple of videos that I liked were football videos. So yeah. like eventually that's all that really popped up on my page. And I was like, all right, I guess we got to do something with that. Yeah. Um, so I, did, I, I got to avoid all the dancing and like people trying to be all like get people trying to get attention by using their bodies and trying to live life on rookie mode, bro. Like, <laughs> rookie mode. <laughs> I mean, I liked that. <laughs> I just try to, I just try to create good content. I try to stay out of everybody's way. Yeah. That's one thing I learned from, this app is like, if you think it's good, but you don't know if it'll hit, there's people out there that, that'll like the same sort of content that you yeah. like. Yeah, and for sure. Don't ever be iffy with that. But, yeah. you know, is, is this kind of a hobby right now, or is this kind of something you see yourself doing long term? I see myself doing TikTok long term. Like, for as long as it stays relevant, because TikTok's rise has been so fast. And yeah. I feel like what a lot of creators think is that, it rose to the top so fast that it could fall just as fast or even faster. But if it does, man, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop creating content. Cause I feel like I've created a brand that stretches yeah. farther than just TikTok. Yeah. I feel like whatever I put my effort into and in putting out content, I know how to put out content that makes people entertained and excited to watch. So I feel like if what, whatever medium it, it's through, whatever app it's through, I feel like I can adapt to what that app needs and what people want to see from that certain area. So I feel like long-term, we could do it. If it's there long-term, we'll, we'll, we'll still be doing it. As long as TikTok's the thing, I'll be posting. But, um, okay. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the mindset when you go into posting these videos? Is it just like make it entertaining or give an inside look? Or, or how do you kind of approach each, each little video? Uh, I feel like it depends what I'm doing, especially because – there are like videos of me just lifting and stuff. Those are just fire to get put up. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm talking about like, if I'm doing like a list about football stuff or if I'm talking about just some having to do with college football in general, that's a little bit more well thought out because I feel like it has to be. Yeah. Because um, I'm, I'm not only representing myself in that point, I'm representing my school. Yeah. That's good that you think like that. I think there's, yeah. there's a lot of like student athlete creators right now that are just like, putting the brand up and then just like yeah. doing their own thing. And it's like, you represent more than yourself you represent a whole school. Exactly. I mean, but when I'm doing like my big boy kind of content, that's, that's really all. Cool just yeah. I appreciate it. That. That's, that's, that's really where I try to just let the full amount, like the full extent of my creativeness go. Yeah. Like that's where I take out all the stops. I'm like, this is my thing to do. Like, this is like, I feel like, I didn't, I didn't start by any stretch. I didn't start anything on big boy TikTok, but I feel like I've at least helped it grow. Good, yeah. Without a doubt. Come to a higher level of relevance. Like that's not for me to like sound cocky or anything. Like, that's just from the numbers that I've seen from those videos and what happens. Like people who will send me messages being like, yo, dude, you've helped out my confidence so much. Thank you. Like I, that really means a lot. Like whatever, whatever people are like, I remember you, you posted a video uh, and it was about like big boy outfits when going out and you had the sweatshirt with the no shirt under and the flannel. Oh yes, sir. I was, I was reading the comments and they're like all saying like, thank you and stuff. And it's like, yeah. that's gotta be a good feeling. It is man. Like when that's, that's probably the best part about what I do when people are like, yo, thank you so much. Like you've given me confidence to go do that. Or like, especially people who like show me results. are like, bro, I took your tips, whatever this date went like super well. Like I took your tips, yeah. whatever. Like I had got to so good, dude. Like it is, it's like a proud uncle moment kind of sort of. Yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I see you, young blood. All right, bro. Like, yeah. yeah, man. And that, and that's funny you say that because, like, I, I still remember when, when I made my first YouTube video. I gave my buddy this messed up haircut, and I went to school yeah. that day, and like people were laughing and like, oh my god, like this video you made like made my day, and I'm like. That's yeah. the type of feeling that I want, like, every time I create something. Exactly. Like, you want what you make, not necessarily to do numbers, but you want it to impact people. Yeah. No, I think it's a great mindset to have. How, on the flip side, though, how do you deal with, like, the hate? Deal with hate? Dude, hate is the biggest joke to me on the planet. I like Because really? I saw you roasting some guy the other day with having his shirt off. Oh, my God. I was crying. I, I love 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 talking 
for no reason whatsoever. And like, I won't talk shit unless I bring receipts with me, bro. And for at least that video, the one I just posted about that kid, he lives like an hour from me, apparently. Like, <laughs> what, a girl he was trying to talk to was hitting me up saying like, yo, like, he's a terrible individual. And I'm like, sucks. Um, but yeah, it shows. Yeah, dude, I mean, but like with that kind of stuff, bro, I'm like, I just love talking smack for no reason. Cause like, what, what are you gonna do? You're a 160 pound bodybuilder. Yeah. And I'm a 290 defensive lineman, bro. Like, you're not going to step to me, dog. <laughs> but, I mean, no, but in all seriousness, I just love talking smack. Just just for the, like, because I, I grew up around a bunch of just teammates and everything. We all talk smack to each yeah, other. Yeah, you're an athlete. Exactly. When it, when it comes to just, when it comes to hate, dude, I just, I treat it like we're just talking trash on the field. Like, we, like, there's never anything really too personal to it. Yeah. But. I just love talking smack for the point of talking smack. Like, I just find – I find it fun. You, like, I find you it, like stirring the pot, it seems like. I do like stirring the pot a little bit, bro. That's funny. Like, especially when I pissed off all of Roy Head TikTok the other day. That was funny. <laughs> I had a bunch of kids in my comments being like, they're like, oh, yeah, you don't know what hard work is. I was like, I came back from an ACL injury, lost damn near 100 pounds, and I'm playing yeah. division one football. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't know what hard work is. Okay. Yeah. So, like, talking smack on the field – does, does that kind of help you? Like, obviously, growing up oh. doing that, does that kind of help you getting the hate comments now? Absolutely, because at least on the field, I got to come up with it on the fly. Yeah. In, in the comment section, I got time to think, bro, <laughs> like, yeah. which is which is more fun. Nah, talking smack gets me fired up. I love it, though. I feel like it's one of the best parts. And then when people, like, actually, like, when people bring hate that's, like, about things that, like, clearly aren't funny, yeah. like, when people try to bring up, like, serious hate, at that point, I'm just like, whatever, bro. Yeah, it's fine, just yeah, but like if if I want to start a pot a little bit, I'll start a pot. <laughs> Most exactly. Definitely. You have you ever got any? I get these all the time, just like hate comments, and then you respond, and then they hit you with a "Oh my god, you responded! I'm actually a big fan." Have yeah. You got those yet? Yeah. Tons, those man. are the worst people. I know. Some kid DM me. He's like, uh, he's like, oh, I play for Eastern Washington. We're gonna beat your ass. I'm like, we don't play you this year. He's like, he's like, well, we would. I'm like, don't live through hypotheticals. And then he's like, oh, dude, I'm just kidding. I'm just happy you responded. And I was like. What's yeah, up? dude, that is the worst. Like, because I want to be nice. Because, like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like, you got to be thankful, right? That they're, mm -hmm. they're your fans and, and they're uh -huh. kind of creating this whole thing for you. But at the same time, it's like, dude, if you're a fan, why are you talking so? Yeah, like, I, I don't know, man. It, it does get your attention, though. So it is yeah. effective. I got to say, it is an effective method to get somebody's attention. There you go. Well, one thing I'm interested in just came to my mind is like the, the talking smack game in high school to college. I mean, obviously, you've only been there for since september or whatever dude i went july i went i went july 2nd was one really yeah. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I'm, th I'm thinking i'm sorry out fall sport but like has this as the talking smack game is it increased or is it, is it not as much in college or can uh, you not really tell yet since we're all i'm i'm close with like all the old linemen there so i mean our talking smack game is more so just us beating on each other and it like being oh, great but I feel like mostly what we do is just call each other fat. Like, especially if somebody gets like, like if I beat somebody on a move, I'm like, ha, fat ass, like as I'm running by them. Or if I get stoned at the line, they're like, yep, too slow for me, boy. I'm like, ah, damn. No, but yeah. I feel like also um, college smack talk, since we come from so many different places and we don't know too many like personal details about everybody yeah. on the team because there's 103 guys, a lot of people, yeah. bro. It's more so just like a joking manner. Like you'll be doing it while laughing because those are your boys. So it's not like it's not like you're really about to be like stepping to somebody because they're talking smack to you in a game. I have no clue. I haven't played a game. I'm a true freshman. I just got here, but yeah. I feel like in games it's definitely different. I like that. And one thing I noticed last year being a freshman, this just kind of came to my head too, is like working out with the guys, getting there, right? You're working out with the guys every day and you're kind of yeah. building this bond. And then I remember coming home for Thanksgiving break and then having to work out by myself and it was just so hard. Have you yeah. kind of had that feeling yet now uh, back home? So I lucked out, bro. I'm teammates with a kid from my hometown who I played with. Him really? Yeah, man. So, I mean. Same position or no? No, nah, he plays receiver. But yeah. you'd be surprised how much, like, receiver drills and D-line drills interlap. Okay. Because fundamentally, it's almost the same thing. Yeah. Your goal is to sprint forward, get a great get off the ball, and change direction. Yeah. Same Essentially thing. what it is. Yeah. Like, 
pass rushing and playing receiver are I feel like a lot of people like fail to see how similar they are like in mechanics wise uh-huh. but it's not something you'd expect and a lot of our drills do overlap so it's cool to work out with him and uh also like a lot of kids who I've either played with in high school or who played in high school before me we all work out so I mean we got a good little uh, click yeah good little click it's kids who are older than me kids who are younger than me kids who are seniors in college and kids who are juniors in high school bro like we got everyone out there working which is pretty sick it's, it's, cool. uh, it's good to see I like that. And, and earlier you kind of hit on, you know, kind of building your brand on TikTok, having your platform there. Are you big on like expanding that, you know, bringing those followers from TikTok to Instagram or TikTok to YouTube? Is that something you're kind of working on now? Um, I feel like if I were to like really be trying to move platforms, I'd try to bring it from TikTok to YouTube. TikTok to um, YouTube. Because Instagram is, Instagram is cool at all, but like I also don't post too yeah. much else other than like football pictures on Instagram because my Instagram is still like my personal Instagram, even though yeah. there's 20 K people follow me on there. Appreciate all them boys. But <laughs> thing that I could probably take the farthest career wise would be YouTube. Okay. So, I mean, if I'm going to take, if I would try to take anything from my TikTok and move it somewhere else, it would definitely be to put it into YouTube. Cause I feel like also you're able to create more, diverse content on youtube yeah without a doubt it's not so much niche like yeah yeah but like that's that's actually it's funny you say that. that's one thing all these young creators ask me i'm like how do i build my brand i'm like taking that step from like having your instagram personal to then making it more like a brand you know and that's something that took me a while is like i don't want to post like my content on instagram like i just like having like my pictures of like when we were on vacation like a normal instagram I think that's like a big adjustment for people because people don't like want to do that. And I get that though. Sure. But like from a YouTube perspective, what would you kind of put out? Would it be this more like one ball life or would it be kind of more like reacting or vlogs or do you kind of know what that would look like yet? I feel like I would try to make it so sort of like an all encompassing thing, not for like every single thing that I do because that'd be a lot. Yeah. But I feel like I'd also be able to put out more in-depth tips on like for like big boys and stuff like that all that stuff and like be like trying to tell people how at least I found a sense of confidence in myself and being a large gentleman and also play like playing d1 ball and putting that out there and putting that kind of content out there will never fail you people always want to see more of what you have to offer and more of what your day-to-day life is because you only see division one play. You only see like college football players usually on Saturdays. Yeah. The other six days of the week people are interested in. So I, mean, I know. Like I, I, I watched a video the other day of, uh, who was it? Claypool on the, on the Steelers. Yeah. He's vlogging now. Like it's, I guess the same with Juju. Like people are so interested in it. He just like made a vlog of him going to practice and leaving. Now it's hit. I'm like, yeah. it was sick for me too. I mean, I kind of get it, but it's just like, such a yeah. simple concept. I mean, that's the good part, though, the simplicity, because if it wasn't simple and if it was super complicated, you would not see athletes, at least at the college level, who don't have, like, PR teams following them. You wouldn't see them as widely on YouTube and social media and stuff like that because it's it just wouldn't fit into the schedule. I feel like the biggest thing for college athletes is just when it's not your sport and when it's not class is simplicity. Yeah. I th- I'm right there with you. <laughs> what are your thoughts on, on the new rule coming out here in uh, in October or the, or the summer, the name, image, and likeness rule? Yeah, apparently, we're going to be allowed to make money is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Dude, I need it, bro. <laughs> I need it, bro. Because let me tell you, man, broke college kid life while putting this out and knowing I could be making money off of this, bro, but exactly. I can't make money off of this. I need it, man. I got a dollar. <laughs> like, I like that, though. You're a grinder. I like that. Have you gotten any opportunities yet? And you kind of have to be like, I can't really do this because I'm, I'm an NCAA athlete. All the time. Bro. I know. All the time. On my Instagram yeah. DMs, if I go through, like, the top um, – because if you go through, like, the top ones and the general ones, the amount of stuff I could be doing for, like, build like furthering my brand and, right, like, yeah. getting into – just business in general with that kind of stuff is it's it's eye-opening it's something that i would love to eventually be able to do and if that rule changes 
like is it is it past that that rule is going to change or like are they yeah i mean i i've talked to some people and they think it's going to get passed in january but won't go into effect until october all right because dude let me tell you they start they, if i'm allowed to start making like compensation off of my work yeah not having it just be this for like for fun artwork that's a game changer because i can put that back into my work exactly get better equipment and get um you know i mean you're just you're you're, you're making money off your passion but you're, you're putting that money yeah. back into your passion it's just a cycle exactly and then you can continue to further uh further grow it and since i'm not on scholarship bro for me being a walk-on if i could eventually get it to the point where i could put myself through school that would be huge like cool. it would I think be that you that you realize that how do you 19 I'm 18, bro. I don't turn yeah. next year, man. Really? I'm young, bro. I'm young. But I think you got to be appreciative of that. Like, you realize that as an 18-year-old, which I'm telling exactly. you, not a lot of 18-year-olds are thinking about that. Exactly. Because so. say, say hypothetically, 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 if I were to get money from my content and were able to – or if I just blew it on whatever, clothes, shoes, whatever – that's not guaranteed. That's that's not going to increase what I can pull from my content and the quality of my content. But if I put my money back into it, I can make it so much like so much higher of a quality. And the fact that anybody knows the grinders mentality, bro, you don't f with your bread. So if if it's your bread you're talking about, the content is going to be fire. I can guarantee yeah, that. Got to be. It's got to be. I like that. You're a smart man. You got you got a good head on your shoulders too. But let's kind of transfer to football now. You know. What was the recruiting process like for you? Recruiting process, that was a long process. It started probably, it actually started at the end of my freshman year. I okay. got invited to a, a game day visit at Rutgers. I actually, hold on, I might still have, I still have the little credential thing. Yeah, when I, yeah. It's, it's weird. I have all my mail in this one drawer. It's, actually, it's, it's, not, it's not too much, but this is what I acquired throughout high school. Yeah, that's sick. So it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but. So we had a couple, at, at one point, there were a couple um, well-known schools recruiting me. I was getting looks from Rutgers, Cincinnati, uh, the Naval Academy, uh, UNC, Arkansas, a couple schools like that. And then as I transferred through sophomore year and uh, getting into junior year, a lot of that fell away because I didn't grow. I stayed 6'1". I didn't become like the 6'4 monster that people were thinking I was going to become. So that I was looking towards more of an FCS kind of guy, but... So, you, you know, sometimes you just get uh, caught up. Timing was a little weird. And the school doesn't find you until late. Yeah. I played my last game of senior year of high school uh, without an offer, without anywhere to oh, go. Okay. So I was sitting there. I was like, yeah, I have no clue where the hell I'm going to go. Yeah. That's when a little bit after that, Elon, they PWO'd me. They gave me a preferred walk-on. And then that co sort of started um, a bit of, not a landslide, but I, it, 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 got the, it got the ball rolling a little bit. Yeah. Had a couple other schools come in. I got one from UMass, but I already decided on going to Elon. And I think the reason I picked Elon was the fact that they were the first people to believe in me. Um, yeah, I think that's big. Yeah. Crazy. I think a lot of times it's like, especially in early recruiting, like you, like I committed as a freshman, you got started getting looks as as a, as a and at the end of freshman year. And I think like you, you can't look at like all the glamour, you know, like. Yeah. You, sure. you saw Rutgers being like this top 25 school reaching out to you and like they got this big football team in this program but like it go it's a college it's like a huge part of your life you got to look past like all this stuff and you get the locker room the sponsors and all that and I, I, I like think like I feel like the people at Elon are just that's probably the main reason I went there man yeah everybody the coaches super honest I also didn't want to go to school up in Jersey so I'm happy that I got to get I, I I'm far away as to where I can come home if I really need to, but I can't come home if I want to. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. I, I, that was my same too. Like I, I, I'm in Virginia. It's a six hour gotcha. drive. Gotcha. And it's like, I, I can't come home on the weekends, but like I can come home for a long break. And that's what I wanted to do too. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm just, I'm just thankful for where I'm at, bro. Yeah. There's, there's no better, there's no other place I would, I would see myself at, especially because I mean, it's Elon, bro. One of the most beautiful it's, campuses, it's cool. if not the most beautiful campus in the country. Yeah. But, so how do you kind of deal with it all now? Obviously, us having kind of a similar 
balancing acts with everything? How do you kind of do it with school, social, and football? I feel like it's just, for me, I'm a big, like, rigid schedule guy. Yeah, I'm the same way. I need, I need everything mapped out. I have a structure. Yeah, I love structure. So mornings for me, mornings are just class, everything like that. After that, practice. After that, get some work done. And then usually it's like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Some days, I don't know how the hell I looked out like this, but some days I didn't have to be up until uh, 11. As, yeah. Really? I, I had no clue. But those days I didn't have to be up until 11. You just sit, you can chill, watch movies with the boys, go upstairs, just watch movies with people. Like It, it, was, it was cool. Not, many, not much partying, if at all, because COVID, but... You know, I mean, once once that's over, I feel like we'll have some get-togethers, but nothing nothing bad. So I mean, yeah. how do you kind of how do you kind of deal with like social right now? Is it you kind of obviously have it school first, then football, and then social? Or how do you kind of yeah. rank them? You think? Yeah, that's that's pretty much how it is. I mean, social life's always going to be there. There's going to be yeah. tons of people you meet in college, like. But the people who you're going to spend most of your time with are, of course, your teammates. So yeah. I'm just happy that I, I'm close with the guys that I live with. Yeah, uh, same way. The, the boys I'm with, like, the ones who we go to bat for all the time, man, like, those kids are who I'm probably going to live with for the next three years. Like, there's, there, there's some great dudes. We all get along. And, I mean, tons of inside jokes after one semester. Yeah. Tons more to come with seven more to go. So, I mean, who knows, man. That's awesome. Well, last question here. Where do you see yourself in five years? In five years. I see myself. So you'll be one year out, right? I'm out. One year out. uh, Still creating content for sure. Hopefully with a job in some company's social media department, at least starting off or at least working for a, or maybe even doing freelance consulting on the side too. Because I feel like the best part about social media is you could have so many streams of income. Yeah. From it. You can have your own brand. You can have your on the side freelance consulting and you can have your structured job where you're working for a corporation or something like that. But hopefully that's the goal. I mean, I'm not some dude who wants to be like, oh, no, I want a mansion in five years. I want this. I want that. I'm like, I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to take a vacation when I, when I want to. Yeah. Be able to just support my people around me. That's really it. Dude, I feel like I'm talking to like a 40 year old genius or something. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. What, 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 what would they call you, Pop? What, Papa, Papa Steve? Steve, bro. Papa, Papa Steve. Steve. Hey, man. Thank you for hopping on Pelk Talk. I, I really appreciate it, man. It was nice to meet you. It was definitely, brother. You too.